In southern West Virginia, there sets a beautiful lush valley that has broken and set records in history. It has also broken hopes, dreams, and lives. Few have walked away completely unscathed by events there, actually reaping in its financial benefits. The New River runs through the center of Fayette County, West Virginia. During the Civil War, the majority of the people in Fayetteville, the Fayette County seat, were Confederate sympathizers with neighboring counties being predominantly Unionist. However, Fayetteville changed hands several times during the war and was partly destroyed during the fighting. The New River is just as misleading as the Vikings were in misnaming Greenland and Iceland, Greenland being ice-covered and Iceland being more temperate. The Vikings simply wanted to discourage and confuse further competition for the good land. Although in the case of the New River, it's believed to have been overlooked on maps by early explorers, something easy enough to do due to the high number of river valleys and creeks throughout the region. Now some people oppose the belief of the newly discovered river theory believing that the New River was previously given a Native American name that was translated as New Waters. I can only speculate if this is true of what they were referring to. In either case, there is a great name confusion that still exists. In fact, the New River is part of one of the world's oldest rivers to exist and complicated in its making which I'll briefly explain as simply as possible. West Virginia, by nature and location, has historically sat on the borders of glacial activity in Northern America. While we've gotten some glacial activity for short periods, most of the time we're on the edge where glacier runoff and ice jams have impacted us the most, resulting in two massive lakes forming in this state and extending into others. I live on the edge of the huge ancient Monongahela Lake, which extends far north into western Pennsylvania. Most of it would have been underwater. Pittsburgh would have sat inside the middle of it. Sections of Ohio and West Virginia were covered up as well. It was the result of glacial formation blocking the northern waterways rivers backed up, forming into a giant lake. The same glacier continued south over Ohio and actually pushed an ancient river in northern Ohio down to the border of Kentucky and Ohio, where it extended. This section of that ancient river would change its name from the Taze to the Ohio. We'll be looking at another part of the ancient Taze River in this video. Down in southern West Virginia, the New River had previously been part of the old Taze River, formed from the melting waters of the ancient Nebraskan glacier during the Permian period, a time when life filled the seas, insects and reptiles were abundant on land, and dinosaurs and mammals had yet to exist. Conifers were just appearing on the planet, and much of today's inner eastern coast of North America was covered by the old Taze River Valley, with its deep canyons and valleys and tributaries. It cut through the layers of rock, old deposits from an ancient sea known as the Appalachian Basin that previously covered much of our east. The river was large and very deep, about 900 feet below where the present river bottom sets, and equally wide in some areas. The same depth of the ancient Lake Tite, which formed from blockages from ice dams, as well as sediment, altering the rivers of the Taze, sometimes changing the course of the waters. As the glaciers grew and receded, the lake would drain, then reform, sometimes backing up as far as the New River Valley areas. During that period in history, the land masses of all the world had grouped together into one supercontinent called Pangaea. Due to continental drift patterns, the supercontinent was broken apart in half, 
Laurasia made up of modern North America, Europe, and Asia, and Gondwana, which would become South America, Africa, India, Australia, and Antarctica. The North American section was splitting away into its own continent, and Gondwana was drifting slowly south then seemed to change its mind, and the continental plate swung around and went northwest, slowly slamming into the section we now call North Africa, into the North American coast. The impact hit with so much force, it would buckle up the old Appalachian Basin section back from the edge of the coast into the great Appalachian Mountains, which were pushed up to Himalayan rivaling heights. The same impact would result in mountains in Ireland and Britain and areas of northern Europe as well as northern Africa. Meanwhile, the Tays kept pace, relentlessly eroding away at the Appalachians pushing upward as it flowed in its, its rare northern direction from near Blowing Rock, North Carolina, fed by the old Kentucky River, which extends from southern Kentucky through Frankfurt and subsequently flowed northeast before eventually joining the Tays. The Tays then flowed through Virginia, West Virginia, Ohio, Indiana, and Illinois, where it flowed into a new great inland sea which covered much of the Midwest. The Mississippi was an embayment of that sea and not yet a river. The Great Lakes and Rocky Mountains had yet to appear. Around this time, the Permian extinction hit. A supervolcano in Siberia exploded, sending debris and gases into the atmosphere, darkening and cooling the planet about 11 degrees Fahrenheit. As the Earth cooled, it wiped out about 95% of all life on the planet and 70% of all plant life. Reptilians were hit hardest, needing the warming sun to remain active. Fortunately, some survived, amongst them the ancestors of the dinosaurs and mammals. Much later down the line, an impact from an asteroid strike would wipe out the dinosaurs in turn, opening the way for mammals to dominate the land. As Africa pulled away, headed toward its present position, North America was rising up from the waters, thanks to plate tectonics and rising and falling sea levels. Slowly the Tays filled up the deep valleys with its sediment as weather, water, and later came the land-scouring glaciers of another ice age, eroding away the tall heights of the Appalachians to almost a plateau and filling the valleys with more sediment. Eventually the Tays and its very deep valleys ceased to exist, as the old valleys were all but filled in and newer, smaller rivers formed from change courses due to sediment buildup and glacier dams and runoff. Now, let's jump far ahead to relatively more recent times to continue this story. As the last great ice age came to an end, early groups of people with distinct Eurasian roots migrating slowly westward had reached the eastern Asian coastline and decided to continue toward the North American western coastline, possibly following migrating animals. These people traveled by foot across the continents by a land ice bridge which connected Russia with Alaska at the time. Following the bridge into North America, as had the animals they hunted. Newest dates say the crossing occurred around 22,000 to 25,000 years ago. Some estimates take it back even further. By 15,000 to 9,600 BC, they were living here regionally. Here they encountered relatively newer rivers, unbeknownst to them, flowing within some of these old Tays River valleys. Now let's fast forward again by about 12,000 years. Europeans arrived during the late woodland period for the natives who farmed as well as being hunter-gatherers. 
The regional terrain was rugged, but the local tribes preferred to stay closer to the rivers, following through the ancient Taze River valleys. There is great hunting, and the sediment-rich soil of the river valleys were also excellent for farming. While the earlier ancient mound builders of the Fort Ancient, Hopewell, and Adena cultures set up more permanent settlements here, leaving their mark on the edge of their civilization, by contrast, the late woodland people were more nomadic in nature, frequently abandoning regions just to use as occasional hunting grounds. Indians used the new river as they traveled west centuries before the pioneers arrived. Finding few natives by the time they expanded this far inland, they felt comfortable moving into the region. But the natives still consider it their territory and hunting ground, resulting in a number of skirmishes, raids, and even wars between them and the encroaching Europeans. Eventually, treaties were made as the Indian homelands shrank and the Euro-Americans continually advanced. In the 1600s, explorers navigating the New River thought they were close to the Pacific Ocean because of its westernly flow. They named themselves the Men of the Western Waters. In 1671, the Bats Phalum expedition by way of the New River came through to the Luric area and ended there because the Indian gods refused to take them any further. They carved their initials in a tree and claimed the territory for King Charles II of England. This was the first proclamation of English territory west of the Alleghenies, making the New River the first gateway into the west in the New River Valley. Abraham Wood was an indentured ten-year-old English boy who was on the English ship Margaret and John. The ship was attacked by two Spanish vessels in the West Indies. Wood was one of the few survivors. The attack led the vessel to turn toward the Virginia colonies. In Virginia, Abraham became a fur trader, politician, explorer of Western Virginia, now the state of West Virginia. He was also a militia officer, earning the title of colonel. In some old maps, the New River is referred to as Woods River. He led the expedition through the valley in 1671, becoming the first known European to find the valley. In 1755, the stories say, an Indian raid left a settlement in Virginia, Draper's Meadow, now the location of Virginia Tech University. They left it with three men, one woman, and an infant dead, and a man two women and two boys taken captive during the French and Indian War. One of the women was Mary Draper Ingalls, daughter of Irish-Scottish immigrants. The two boys were her young sons. The other woman was her sister-in-law. They were forced to walk 800 miles west to the Shawnee village where Mary's son were adopted out to tribe members and Mary was given to a French trader. The trader also held a German Dutch woman who may have been named Mrs. Stumpf. Together, the two women escaped and managed to walk the 800 miles back to their homes following the river valleys of the old Tays, including the New River Gorge. Mary's story, by the way, seems to get mixed with the story of Mary's sister-in-law, who also was an Ingalls. Both escaped from their captors. Both were accompanied by a Germanic woman, and in both stories, ravished by hunger, the German woman tries to eat them along the way. The difference is in minor details. Although the New River has seen numerous tragedies over its years, such as the woman who seemed to have been starved to the point that hunger pangs drove her to attack her travel companion in an attempt to feed off of Mary for survival. The valley has seen his share of miseries, but it's the final 11 miles of that river 
could have easily have been called the river of lost dreams and sorrows. Well over a thousand lives have been lost, hopes and dreams dashed, and towns and settlements flooded and burned before becoming abandoned along the river. The unknown death toll could be reached into the thousands during its non-recorded and poorly documented earlier history. There were three main industries in the region. One relied on the coal pockets on its valley walls, the railway that passes through the valley on the valley floor, and the lumber industry which harvested the trees on its hillsides. One enterprising man quickly figured out how to take advantage of it and change business and many lives in the process. For better or worse.